And now here it's time to join Trev Lynham for Match of the Day. Good evening. Back to the future for us. 27 years in the past to bring you some action that's 27 years ahead of anything you may ever see today. The start of the new Premiership season got underway and here at Match of the Day we'll bring you the Premier seat for Footballing's Premier Competition. Match 1 for us today is Manchester United, the defending champions. Tough task starting off away to Wimbledon at Selhurst Park. Surely nothing would be hit from the halfway line in this. With Leon Hudson, chip forward there, and Akuku trying to volley and volleying it wide. We then go to the Riverside to see Brian Robson, Middlesbrough. Multi million pound investment, but could the sparkling Hollywood football arrive uh, in the northeast? This is Beck. Ravinelli, does the flag stay down? James is out, Fabrizio Ravinelli, oh, it strikes the post! Can you believe that? We'll also bring you all the other goals that have taken place today in this first week of the Premiership. And of course, Trevor and Trevor will be with me today. We'll get their views and reactions of all the games to come. But first to Selhurst Park and the defending champions Manchester United. What was it one of the pundits here said? You'll never win anything with kids? Well, that was that to prove the point. With the changing of the new Bosman ruling into effect, Manchester United have made five summer signings all of a European nature, along with their spine and flair and a couple of players to the parts, notably Steve Bruce leaving Manchester United. Eric Cantona took the armband for a brand new season. Commentary here comes from Trev Motson. Well, today, Manchester United on opening day have probably the toughest assignment of the lot. Vinnie Jones and Wimbledon. Well, should be a cracker between two football sides that have separate contrasts as we look at Wimbledon, a typical one ball side managed of course by Joe Kinnear who still have the crazy gang spirit about them playing practical jokes and the like and the football version of Beatles about well they play on 4-4-2 diamond with Vinnie Jones at the hub of that with Leonardo on the attacking midfielder in behind Akuku and Gale the two centre forwards as for Manchester United who make three changes from the charity shield game last week which they won 3-2 Paul Scholes comes in for Oligan well, and Solskjaer, Roy Keane comes into midfield and Schmeichel, Peter Schmeichel replaces Van der Gaal for his first game of the season. Both Keane and Schmeichel back from Knox. Our referee today on a sunkist afternoon here at Sellers Park is David Anglery from Arrowy Middlesex. Here's Roy Keane. United attacking the Homestale Road and uh, away to my left here. All skulls. Cantona with a shot. Deflected and it limped over under the crossbar with Sullivan completely stranded and Kimball got it away what a deflection I think of Chris Perry let's see it again Skulls laid it in there's the oh yes off Perry all right and Kimball got it out and a little bit of heart in mouth there for Joe Kinnear's men at the start but Keane towards Cantona who got the header in but again Played in there to Scholes, nice turn from Scholes away from Dean Blackwell and a terrific save as well by Neil Sullivan. And look at Scholes here, this is what he's trying to make him, his reputation out of, chances out of nothing. Absolutely turned Blackwell on a sixpence and Neil Sullivan had to be, had to be good to get that save in there. Terrific piece of goalkeeping. Alan Kimball. Kimball doing really well. Now then, can he get the cross in? He can up towards Marcus Gale, a little flick on, but uh, Gary Neville should get that away from Manchester United. No trouble at all. 16 minutes gone then at Selhurst. Wimbledon nil, Manchester United now on the opening day of the Premiership season. 
Oh, with Lee Nelson. Chip forward there. And Akuku trying to volley. And volleying it wide. In fact, it wasn't even troubling Jamaica, really. But that's the best we've seen Wimbledon. That's the ball from Blackwell up towards Akuku. And then Lee Nelson spotted Akuku making a good run. But uh, tried to volley it when trying to get away from David May. game yet, yet to yield a goal or two here this afternoon still plenty of time left 15 minutes of the first half to go plus uh, 45 of the second so plenty of time for goals his kicks down the left looking in there towards Cantona and uh, punched away by the goalkeeper and in the end Perry and Earl I think got it out for a throw but uh, Ryan Giggs to run this craft down that uh, left hand channel and Cantona with a header, which was probably straight at the goalkeeper in fairness. He still had to be required to make a save. David May. Oh, that's a nice ball, Giggs again. Four minutes to go till the interval, and here's Cantona now. Cantona's cross, goals he's there, sports goals, and he should have scored. And he down and he well knows that. Giggs did really well. Cantona with the ball in. Oh, he knows he should have scored their goals. Again, a lovely ball towards Giggs. That's the feature of the United's play. They can, they can play from left to right flank in a blink of an eye. And here's Giggs down the left from Erwin's pass. And this is beautifully constructed. And Cantona comes in. And Manchester United are in the lead. With a minute to go to half, with just less than a minute of normal time to play before the break. Harry Cantona. Beautifully constructed down the uh, left hand channel by first Teddy Serwin and then Ryan Giggs. He's ball into the area. And Cantona, who two years ago disgraced himself in a game against Crystal Palace for Manchester United. My come through in a supporter. Well, he's done it. He's done his business here at Sellers today in the right way. The skipper leading by example, and it's Wimbledon nil, Manchester United one. Eric Cantona back at Sellers Park and back with a goal. Well, that's really got Wimbledon's backs up a little bit because they were as good as they've got, and they're given as good as they've got, but United's real quality has shone through. But wait a moment, here's Leon Hudson way through and they might get in here and up in the cookie 1-1 the crazy gang are level with the culture club up in the cuckoo and what a brilliant finish Wimbledon 1 Manchester United 1 up in the cuckoo well the place is buzzing now quite a few Wimbledon fans quite a number of Manchester United fans here today and this was worth waiting for, certainly for the Don supporters. And what a good finish that was too. So Wimbledon, level at 1-1. Leon Nelson went a beautiful ball through, splitting the defend United defence into, into, into half. And there's the shot to make it 1-1. FN Akuku, the goal scorer. Nicky Butt. Nicely played to Ryan Giggs. That's a beautiful ball. Roy Keane. Played a minute and a half of time added on at the end of the first half. Eric Cantona. Dennis Irwin. Roy Keane. Ryan Giggs. Giggs is cross. Cantona's there. And a goal! Cantona has made it 2 1. Or has he? The flag is up on the far side, and David Ellery. Having seen the linesman put his flag up, has disallowed the goal. We're offside. Well, let's see it again. Oh, yes. Both linesman and referee were right. And it remains 1 1 here at Selhurst Park as we approach half time. Well, Wimbledon have struggled a bit sort of, uh, for fans since moving away from Plough Lane back in 1991. But what they lack in support, they make up in a lot of spirit. And they do well every season to keep dividing the odds year upon year. Into the second half. This is David Beckham. No changes from Iris Sign, incidentally, during the interval. That's Roy Keane. Jones has stopped him. 
and uh, stopped him in his own inevitable way. Free kick to Manchester United, says Stephen Ellery, the referee. <laughs> well, Rennie Jones has always had that reputation of being, shall we say, no holds barred in a lot of respects. I'm giving David Ellery the eyes there. So it's a free kick then to Manchester United, and uh, it's going to be uh, Beckham over it. Played in there, headed away by Marcus Gale. And it comes to Keane now. And Earl has stopped it terrifically well. The fan who started his career at Port Vale, we remember, in those cup victories over Tottenham and Watford a few years back in 1988. He was part of that scene then. And he's part of the Wimbledon crazy gang now as a cuckoo plays it in there towards Gale. He should have scored. What a wonderful breakout from Wimbledon. Now David Beckham. Roy Keane. That's a nice ball for Keane. That's been the feature of United's play. These long little passes from, from the centre and finding people like Giggs who can cause no end of troubles for the opposition. But to Irwin. And now Irwin's ball in there. And it's knocked away once more. Here's Nicky Butt taking it up. Finding Beckham. Into Butt. Plenty of Wimbledon players back, but Butt has turned him nicely and just pulls the shot wide. United started to pair it again once more. Wimbledon brought, what, six back there, but Butt found a way through and almost made it 2 1. Jones and Keane have had a real battle royal in that midfield as we approach the final 20 minutes of this game. Still 1 1, and still all to play for. Committed left, right, and centre here. Robbie Irwell for Wimbledon. Here's Finney Jones, the skipper. But that's a very loose ball into the path of David May, and United can counter here, and they're very good at that. Beckham to Scholes. And Scholes with the shot. And in the end, it goes over the top and wide for a goal kick. But uh, Vinnie Jones will be a relief man there, because that was very loose the ball from Vinnie. And he'll know that the, the skipper. And then when Scholes got in, got in to shoot, he shot just wide. Now David May, Neville, to Beckham, and to Butt, 18 minutes, well, 17 and a half minutes left to play then at uh, Selhurst, Wimbledon 1, Manchester United 1, Giggs, still Giggs, looking for took up here in terms of a possible cross, oh it's turned Kimball nicely there, but off we come by Cantona, and Beckham on the way, 2-1! What a wonderful Manchester United goal! Giggs with a magnificent cross, Cantona with a great flick on, and Beckham coming in at the far post to volley it on the side of his right foot, past Neil Sullivan to make it 2 1. Well, I said last week in the Charity Shield that he may be an England player, may possibly an England captain for the future. Today, in front of Glenn Hoddle, he's just shown why. There's the flick on from Cantona, that's terrific, and the sister and the goal for him today. And Beckham, what a finish that is. He's certainly one for the future, and Manchester United, in the immediate future, are two on ahead. David Beckham. Okay, Dean Holdsworth now going to come on for Marcus Gale as Wimbledon look to try and pull this game back to 2-2 with, what, eight, what, 12 minutes to go, plus any... Injury time at the end of this game. He needs something, Wimbledon. They've been in it for most of the afternoon, it's got to be said. Long throw towards Holdsworth. Looking for his first touch, he was over Holdsworth's head, to be fair. King gets it out, but only as far as Neil Ardley here. Wimbledon going for the jugular now. They have to now, the crazy guy. Leonardson shot, gets a deflection and a corner. It is to Wimbledon. It's going to be Neil Ardley to take it. Jones is in there, Akuku's in there, Holter's in there, Early's in there, there comes the corner towards Vinny Jones, and a great save! Shemichael gives United in front, Vinny Jones of all people, nearly making it 2-2, but what a save that was from Peter Shemichael, and in that one moment, that could win Manchester United surely all three points. Well, chaps, uh, we've got to talk about that performance, particularly that uh, young uh, David Beckham. Outstanding performance, didn't he, Trevor? Yeah, really, really good performance by Beckham. 
Um, what I liked about it today was that constant drive, the constant looking to get forwards and say wide. And he's he's got a wonderful cross, Beckham really has, and uh, I think that caused them all sorts of problems today. So I thought it was an outstanding performance. And you say, Trevor, um, what about Wimbledon? Should we say on that performance? Well, uh, if I'm Wimbledon, I wouldn't be too worried because I felt they were in the game. Um, uh, have they got the quality to potentially challenge for the championship? I don't think so. Uh, but what they do have is the ability to uh, push those. I think uh, Wimbledon could be dark horses to have a very good season. Because, to be fair, they ran Manchester United really close today. Um, I just feel that w when it came to it, you know, you, you look at the difference between the two. Manchester United have three points down to an excellent save from Peter Schmeichel. And that is the fine margins. Championships are won and lost. Well, indeed. Well, let's then head over to the Riverside now for our second match today. Middlesbrough have spent multi-million pounds in signing Emerson and Fabrizio Ravanelli and company in a Middlesbrough side that's promising to really march up the table. Big investment made against a Liverpool side, which, to be fair in them last season, fell apart at the final moments for them. It was against these sort of games that Roy Evans has criticised his Liverpool side for perhaps not quite be, be able to get over the line. Will history repeat itself? Commentary from this one comes from Trevor Davis. Well, the Robson Revolution continues at the Riverside here in the heart of Teesside. Middlesbrough hosts the FA Cup finalists in Liverpool of a season of optimism after England's summer carnival breathed new life into the beautiful game. Brian Robson as player manager sticks himself on the bench for today's game but multi-million pound signing of Brazilian midfielder Emerson, an Italian striker and European Cup winner, Fabrizio Ravanelli breathes hope here into a Middlesbrough side with Juninho, Musto, Emerson and Craig Ignick making the midfield up. Nigel Pearson takes the armband in the uh, absence of Robson, hoping for the game. As for Roy Evans, Liverpool today, Collymore and Fowler are chosen to lead up front for them. McManaman and McAteer will reprive the width. Barnes will keep the armband again. Due to Mark Wright's not Neil Ruddock has chosen to partner Phil Babb in the central defence. John Barnes with the corner for Liverpool. Redknapp has come short. Here he is. Five in the area still for Liverpool. Back to Barnes. But minimum. Oh, what a wonderful way to start the match! Oh, Steve McManaman, take a bow. Great finish. Oh, delightful there from Steve McManaman. Lined himself up. Let fly with the shot. Liverpool lead in the sixth minute here at the Riverside. It shows you the step up. Multi-million pound signing Middlesbrough. Touted as being able to build on their 12th place finish from last season. Barnes. McManaman, and I think it was Fabrizio Ravanelli that failed to close down McManaman. Barnes running his teammate in all the time in the world. Oh, I take it back, it wasn't. Either way, it's 1 0 Liverpool. Into Barnes. And McManaman. Collymore easily turning, easily scoring. And Liverpool really are turning on the style here. We barely played 10 minutes and they're two up. It's a lesson here in being able to keep the ball, certainly is the case. But McManaman plays it into Collymore, able to turn Pearson with ease. And Walsh in the Middlesbrough goal did not stand a hope at the power and pace and precision that Collymore could hit them at. 2-0 Liverpool. Into Juninho. This is Robbie Musto. Beck. Branco. Still Branco! Oh, he's hit the woodwork! Unlucky! Branco turned on a sixpence. And let fire with the shots. Charge forward from left back. Moment of inspiration. He was desperately unlucky with the finish. James well beaten. I wonder if it's Liverpool's day.
Emerson out wide. Runs in fields, looking for options. Goes on the left foot, parried away by James. Had all the time in the world, Emerson, but showed us real quality here. Able to move away from Bjornemi, who let him go. Then pass McManaman. James had to be alert for that one. It was goal bound. Still, it's a good start. Here's Pearson. Sense very much Middlesbrough that they'll be happy to attack. More than happy to attack here, but defensively that's going to be their challenges. This is Fester. Emerson ahead of him. Here he is now. Fester again. Goes across to Hignett. Early pass to Branco. Now Craig Hignett. Trying to hold off Barnes. And Barnes does well to dispossess. Fowler back to Barnes again. Just Collie Moore ahead. McAteer. Cut out by Emerson. This is Beck. Ravinelli. Does the flag stay down? James is out. Fabrizio Ravinelli. Oh, it strikes the post. Can you believe that? Well, Ravinelli found himself through in a golden opportunity. One on one with James. Not quite the sharpness he showed in the European Cup final. And it cannons off the woodwork to James's relief. does get there first he did really well Beck Ravinelli charging forwards up against Ruddock here is Ravinelli needs support he's seen it because he's gone out wide to Janino Beck is forward so is Musto Janino charges on and still Janino brilliant work from McManaman firm but fair and winning the ball back and now this is McAteer is Collymore onside? Yes, he is. Collymore has made it three. And I suspect has got three points for Liverpool there. Middlesbrough pushing forward, but just showing a bit of naivety. Good work here by McAteer. Suspicions of offside. Looks to be level when live with Nigel Pearson staying Collymore. And the finish is so assured when one-on-one. -on -one. Referee gave a second to take a look. There went Collymore. That might just be game, set and match. This is Gianluca Fester. Emerson charging forward. Fester trying to go on. Doing well. His cross. Towards Ravinelli. Ranko back to Emerson. Now Janino. Janino strike this just parried away. The foot of James in the end. Or even more the player manager himself make an appearance. White to Hignett. Now Janino. Lay off just before Redknapp could get there. Emerson. Beck back to goal. Trying to shake off Bab. And that's a free kick in a promising area. Janino decides to take it quickly and gets it back again. Mikhail Beck! Yes! And it's one back for Middlesbrough. And we might have a very interesting 25 minutes or so of this match. Janino electing to wait, take it quickly. Lovely one too with Fester. Beck's effort across goal. Perhaps questioning of why Liverpool's marking. Just switching off the fact that Beck was left unmarked. In terms of his finish, he's placed it right past James. Middlesbrough are back in it. And the player manager is going to make an appearance. Here is Steve at minimum. Barnes. Matteo has lost it to Robson. Just caught Dominic Matteo. Not necessarily sure I see too much wrong with that myself, and I do have to understand uh, Ryan Robson's frustration. 
as well. Musto, another goal here, really would raise the noise level here inside the Riverside. There were 20 minutes to try and find it. This is Musto. Blanco, Robson, looking for Ravanelli. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Ravanelli still has the ball, very comfortable with it. Fabrizio Ravanelli now, back to Emerson. Robson. Janino. Emerson. Looking for Festa out wide. Emerson. Probbing and proding. And Janino. Oh, it's parried away by James. Right in front of Ravanelli. It's a very good save. The Italian set the forward sitting right in front of him. James reacted well. Robson. Janino. What a delightful ball by Janino. This is for Fabrizio Ravanelli. It's across the back. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's 3 2, and Liverpool may not have wrapped up the three points if Middlesbrough have anything to say about it. Ravanelli played through by a brilliant pass by Janino and so unselfishly gets it through to Mikhail Beck who sits on the verge of a hat-trick as Middlesbrough sit on the verge of an unlikely point if they can find for each of them one more goal. Matteo. Barnes. Is there to be an equaliser? It would be incredible. Based in the situation Middlesbrough found themselves after an hour in this contest. Rednap goes out wide to Matteo. Barnes. Lovely. McAteer. Finding Collymore. That would have sealed it. As it happened, Connie Moore couldn't quite produce what he did in the first half. Able to roll Pearson, but not able to find the finish past Walsh. Here's Emerson now. Into Beck. Stoppage time. Now Janino, can he get there? Yes, he can. It's Ravanelli onside. The flag stays down. It's Ravanelli! It's 3-3! Incredible finish! Worth every single penny! Fabrizio Ravanelli levels the match! In stoppage time! Amazing! Absolutely fantastic! Ravanelli responds to the Riverside. Middlesbrough cannot believe it. Neither can Liverpool. It's a little bit of history repeating itself today. Giannino did so well, but this finish from Ravanelli from such a tight angle, picked a corner, stayed on side, that's it there. He just halted his run just behind Ruddock, who has had his number for 90 minutes, just not for 91. Incredible. Three apiece here. It's finished three all here at the Riverside. A, pulsat a pulsating game to kick off the start of the Premiership season. The Riverside has been host to a real gift of a game. We have seen some quite fantastic football, but a comeback to remember for a long time for Middlesbrough Football Club. Full time here at the Riverside after a fantastic match. It is Middlesbrough 3, Liverpool 3. Oh, quite unbelievable there. Um... <laughs> History repeating itself, 3-3. Three, three. Excellent game between two sides that attack, but from a, a Middlesbrough standpoint, um, nothing for them right until the halfway mark. Um, maybe, but let's not forget that they did hit the woodwork twice. So let's just bear that in mind. That was very unlucky from their standpoint. Um, I've got to say, the fighting spirits around that, I think Mikhail Beckham, Fabrizio Ravani, looked to have already formed a decent strike partnership 
uh, in in training already, and I think they're going to cause a lot of teams a few problems this season. Uh, it's defensively I'm worried about Middlesbrough this season. They didn't look that well set. There looked to be some problems there. Um, if they can overcome that, uh, I think they've got a chance of having an excellent season. And Trevor, want to get your thoughts uh, on Liverpool. 3-0 um, up, going really well, and it all fell apart. Well, uh, yeah, and uh, I think Liverpool, again, they just took their foot. They got to that third goal and their foot went off the accelerator completely. They really tried to sit back. And then when Middlesbrough got back onto them, you, you didn't see anybody in that midfield or that d defensive team really trying to take control of the match. Yes, Liverpool were about Mark Wright, who's still recovering uh, from injury. But they lacked that sort of inner still, their belief, that leadership to get them through. At 3-0, it should have been game over. And I think there's going to be serious questions asked in Liverpool. You know, they've got Arsenal coming up on Monday night. And, you know, defensively, uh, they look woeful to me. Their second half performance was, was, was dreadful. And if they carry on with performances like that, um, you know, challenging for the championship, it's not going to happen for Liverpool. Well, uh, those are the two games we've got for you. It's time to run through all the other games that have taken place today. Report here comes from Trevor Sinstat. Arsenal started off the season in imperious fashion against West Ham United and then he got an early goal in the opening second minute. Ian Wright put through, but his shot cannon off the post. Polosko grateful that it ball bounced right in front of him. And the Woodbook was to rattle again, this time through the Dutchman Dennis Bergkamp. His long way strike had the bar rattling for ages. Molosko well beaten, but it wasn't to be the case. In the second half, though, Bergkamp made the difference. His lovely little through ball played Ian Wright was able to beat Molosko in the air post and give Arsenal the lead. Just what Highbury wanted, Arsenal in the ascendancy. And the ascendancy continued. A bit of confidence seemed to be spurred and the passing game appeared. Platt's long ball played by Burkamp into Parler. The two combining along with Ian Wright when eventually Burkamp toked it through to an unmarked Paul Mercy running through the area. Cool calm finish over to Sonic Pass Melosko. 2-0 Arsenal. West Ham nearly really threatened in the game and in the end it was all sealed late in the end of the second half. Lee Dixon's ball into Ray Parler that pulled it back. Slavin Bilic missed it. Ian Wright didn't. Oft already to be the league's top scorer after two games. A 3-0 win for Arsenal and a comfortable performance in the end. Not, however, if you're a West Ham United man. Nottingham Forest looked to be a side that's found their rhythm with some good signings. But it was Noel William that got the early shock. Able to hold off Stuart Pearce's left footed strike was able to rifle past Crossley and give Coventry City the lead at Highfield Road. But it would, wouldn't last long. Dean Saunders playing through after an excellent run in the end by Kevin Campbell. And his finish by Rizovic was really calm and collected. The Saunders went ahead and throw back the years. And a moment of controversy that arrived not long after that. Ian Wone played in Alfinger Holland that was brought down by Grzyzovic. But the cries of foul was given against when the referee waited, hesitated, then gave the penalty. Apparently, Alfinger Holland was looking to square the ball across. But in the end, the goalkeeper said why on earth was the foul given. Anyway, it was given and from Coventry's standpoint, Justin was done. Stuart Pearce missed his penalty, pulling it wide. Thankfully, he didn't do that in Euro 96. But still, it wouldn't be long before Nottingham Forest continued to make more chances. Worms crossed, Campbell's header, a bar rattled again, Rizovic getting away with it. Definitely Forest on top. And in the second half, it shows. Stuart Pearce's cross found a new signing for them, Brian Raw. Completely unmarked in the area, criminal defending, an easy finish there for Roy to open his account for his new side. And there was to be a third goal for Nottingham Forest. In the end, Burrows got lost inside his own area. Little was able to take the ball from him. A little flick back by Roy in arriving Alfinger Holland to Bika Rizovic and make it 3-1. A comfortable performance in the end for Nottingham Forest, who truly outplayed Coventry. It could be a long season for them. Hillsborough was ready for David Pleats Sheffield Wednesday to show what they could do, and it didn't take the long. Pembridge's cross was met by Hurst, off the bar again, but eventually a bit of luck showing, and Hurst able to celebrate as, far as Wednesday went ahead and took an early lead. And it was to be a sort of game in which they would continue to create chances, but Reggie Blinker showed all you need is half a chance, and an early contender for goal of the month already. A wonderful curling strike that's definitely worth seeing again, Bosnich was absolutely helpless to this. 
it couldn't have been placed any sweeter. But there was a chance for Aston Villa to get back in the game. Fernando Nelson found himself in space. Nolan leapt in, won the ball, but got too much of the man for referee Paul Durkin's liking, pointed to the spot. Dwight York stepped up, Pressman got a hand, but couldn't keep it out, and Aston Villa were able to get themselves back in the game. But they weren't able to find an equaliser, and in fact there was a third goal. And it's a pasta-loving Italian, if ever there was a staring at that got the goal. Benito Carboni, remember the name? He went ahead and slotted the ball, coolly passed Bosnich to make it 3-1 Sheffield Wednesday. A great win there, and Hills were absolutely rocking in a lovely sunny afternoon in Sheffield. Everton and Newcastle United played out a real classic game between the two sides. Graham Stewart's little link-up with Nick Barbie was quite excellent, as was Stewart's finish. Left-footed rifle past Cernicek. Newcastle United tried to get back into the game and it did so for a brilliant bit of brilliance from Ginola. His free kick rifled into the top corner over the ball. There was nothing Neville Southall could do about that finish. And there was a moment of controversy late on. Cross came in, arrived across to Phelan that tried to dribble it past Ginola. It did go well for him. A panic, a foul, in the box. Easy decision for referee Uriah Rainey to give the penalty. Upset Alan Shearer to open his account for his new side, powering the ball past Southall and putting Newcastle United ahead. Delight for the New England captain, as we found out from Glenn Hoddle. But it wasn't delight for Newcastle in the end. Everton were able to get back in the game. Lovely work from Gary Sweet, able to find space on the right. His pass was picked up by Thompson. One touch and the second curling strike beat Cernicek and levelled the game up at two apiece. Certainly from the aesthetics, Goodison Park was absolutely rocking. And they nearly had a moment of brilliance to settle the game. Gary Speed able to get past Rob Lee and then able to get past David Batty. Fired the left foot just a couple of inches over the bar. Would have been an outstanding goal if it had gone in. Two apiece this finish at Goodison Park in an absolutely brilliant match. Derby County and Leeds United also played out a mini classic in the end at Pride Park. Open a year early, but don't worry, still able to show there's some magic that the baseball ground had, especially when Ashley Ward's left right-footed shot was able to beat Nigel Martin from distance and open the scoring. Leeds United, though, were able to draw lever. A corner that was powered in at the near post by Lee Sharp, the former Manchester United man showing his return after his summer move. And it was Sharp that instigated Leeds' goal that put them in the lead. He was able to sit there and play the ball outright to Tony Dorigo. His cross was met by Carlton Palmer. See Graham Taylor's England of three years ago. Palmer's header rifled into the net and put Leeds United ahead. But there was to be an equaliser. Paul Trollope was able to find space on the left-hand side and met by the Costa Rican Paolo Wanchop. The first save was brilliant by Martin, but nobody reacted quicker than here inside the area. Derby County draw level might have found a new superstar in the process. Life without Shearer goes on for Blackburn Rovers, but it was the other half of the SES that turned to be their tormentor in the end. A 1-0 win for Tottenham Hotspur, and a turn to Sheringham that headed the ball in and settled the game for him. In a poor performance, it has to be said, by Rovers. What was looking like a boring 0-0 draw turned out to be anything but. A Sunday afternoon, you were waiting for a moment of magic. There it arrived from Mark Hughes. Chip up the left, volley on the right. Absolutely nothing Besant can do. Mark Hughes strikes again. A goal at the Dell to give Chelsea an away win to start the season. Sunderland and Leicester City were the two promoted sides that played out the only goal was draw. But some people will ask Haas. Paul Bracewell and Niall Quinn both hitting the woodwork from close range in a close encounter that didn't break for neither man. And there was to be one chance for Leicester City. Their best rider Steve Claridge. His header struck the bar. It was goalless at the end at the Stadium of Light. Well, uh, for those that want to see it, here is the top of the Premiership today. Arsenal uh, ahead on goal difference. Uh, best performance of the day. Biggest win. Top six will victorious. Bottom half of the table. Uh, well, 15 through to 20 yet to get off the mark. Uh, but not some huge goal differences. Uh, lots of teams getting involved. I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, the table won't look like this potentially come the end of the season. There you go. Well, that's it from uh, us here on the opening day of the Premiership season in which uh, it's all got things have all got going again. One thing that we can show after the drama that we had here in the European Championship, all eyes were on the English game today and it certainly delivered. 
but it delivered to a memorable comeback in the end by Middlesbrough. From all of us, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.